Hello everybody, Mark, aka the Nerdy Punk, back with you again today for a new video. Uh, before we get started today, I want to point one thing out. Please ignore the massive zit on my forehead. Uh, I don't exactly have a makeup budget for these videos, and I didn't want to just wait around till the thing went away. So please ignore that. Also, cheers everybody. I'm gonna be taking a few sips of water because uh, throughout this video, because as you guys know, uh, this video is gonna be quite long. Um, this is a video I've been wanting to make for a long time, and especially since quarantine uh, happened and the coronavirus outbreak and all that stuff, uh, I've been thinking a lot about this video and I've uh, made my list through throughout quarantine and kind of adjusted it. And uh, I, I really want to talk about movies and my favorite movies because uh, right now I'm going through withdrawals and I'm really missing going to the movie theater and seeing new movies. And it really doesn't appear like we're going to be able to see new movies in a theater for a long time. Uh, Tenet just got delayed again today, uh, which is Christopher Nolan's new movie. Christopher Nolan's going to feature... Uh, at least a couple times on my list today. I love his movies and I was so excited to see his new one in theaters, but it just got delayed, like I said, through the third time and they said it would be delayed indefinitely. So I'm starting to think that there's a chance we might not see new movies in the theaters this year, which sucks for someone like me who's such a big, big fan of movies and the movie theater is one of my favorite places on the planet, but... Um, I'm missing it real bad, so I figured I'd talk about my favorite movies of all time, and that's what this video is, my top 30 favorite movies of all time. I'm also going to be looking down periodically throughout the video, because I've got my uh, computer down here with my list of my top 30 favorite movies, uh, so I can kind of keep myself in, in line here. So without further ado, like I said, this video is going to be long. Uh, I'm not going to go into excessive detail about every movie, but I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. I tried to include a variety of both the genre and um, age of movies. So, like, there are movies that released all the way back in 1960 on this list, and then there's movies that just released last year on this list. Uh, I will tell you that my list is probably more geared towards the last decade or so of movies because that's when I grew up and I think we all have that uh, personal bias of our favorite types of art are the stuff that came out when we were young, right? So a lot of my favorite movies I watched during my childhood or I watched uh, as I began to get really, really deep into movies like I have the past few years. So a lot of these movies I've watched in the past three to four years because that's when I became like really obsessive into movies like I've always loved them but I really got into stuff uh, in the past three or four years so a lot of uh, bias there but uh, it's my list so my list is gonna look a lot different than yours if your favorite movies not on this list I apologize but I either haven't seen it or it's not one of my favorite movies plus considering the vast uh, majority of movies that have been released are not on this list. It's only 30, and there's literally millions of movies that have been released. So, uh, I just picked out my 30 favorites. So, let's get done rambling, let's get into this list. So, my uh, number 30 movie of all time is Saw, which came out in 2004. It was directed by James Wan and Lee Whannell. Lee Whannell also stars in this movie. Uh, Lee Whannell plays, um, I forget the character's name, but he plays the uh, the younger guy who's been abducted. And Saw is a horror movie that started off the franchise of Saw films. And uh, the movie w and the series of movies are very famous for being very low, bu low budget. A lot of horror movies are made by major studios because they're cheap to make and they can make a lot of money off of them. Saw is kind of the epitome of that. The movie was cheap to make and uh, it made tons and tons of money. But it was a really, really good movie. You can tell that it's low budget for sure. 
um, especially in like the the few scenes that are shot outdoors for the most part the movie takes place in one room and you have these uh, two guys who are abducted by the serial killer and the serial killer puts them through uh, a series of tests I guess you would say and uh, the movie is especially this first one is not just about gore and like shock value and stuff it really has a societal message to it which is what makes it an exceptional film to me. My number 29 movie of all time is Avengers Infinity War. Um, this is my only representation from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Infinity War is my favorite MCU movie. I think it's the climax of the MCU um, as a whole in the uh, Infinity Saga, shall I say, which I have absolutely no idea where they are going with the MCU uh, in the future, obviously because of the events of Endgame, there's a lot of major characters that are kind of going to be missing in the future, uh, so, but this Infinity Saga, which was the MCU from 2008 when it started with Iron Man, all the way through Endgame in 2018, or 20, 2019, yeah 2019, sorry, I got my years mixed up. Um, also, I forgot this movie came out in 2018, directed by the Russo brothers. I wanted to mention the release date and the director for every movie. Anyway, uh, this is my favorite MCU movie, like I've said. Uh, it's the perfect climax to the MCU. Uh, really a mind-blowing film for me at the time when I watched it the first time. I watched this thing three times in theaters, and I, I loved it so much. Uh, really interesting way that they they presented it it really feels it's the most it feels like it's the most serious and most dramatic of the series uh and the entire marvel universe so infinity war is my mcu representation at number 29 number 28 is parasite came out in 2019 directed by bong joon ho this is i think the only film on here that's not in English. This is a South Korean film. Of course, the dialogue is in Korean. And uh, I have nothing against foreign movies. I actually really like foreign movies. I think it's interesting to see what other countries are putting out there. But I just don't watch a whole lot of them. <laughs> um, you have to read the subtitles. You can't like zone out of the movie or else you'll be completely lost. Uh, occasionally, when I'm just casually watching movies, I'll just zone out and look at my phone or something. But with subtitles, you really have to pay attention. And uh, with great movies like Parasite, it's entirely worth it to pay attention to the subtitles. And with a movie as good as Parasite, you forget that you're reading subtitles. You just get lost in the movie. Uh, and that's a great thing that Parasite did. Parasite also had an amazing social commentary about the haves and the have-nots in society, uh, the people who are in the upper class and the people who are in the lower class, and kind of the differences between the two, how we treat each other, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it has a little bit of horror elements as well, but it's definitely not uh, focused solely in the horror genre. But it's, it's an absolute masterpiece. Um, out of the three movies that I have on here from 2019, out of the three, this is the one that I could see slipping down the list for me. Just because, personally, I didn't love it as much as I loved the other two. Um, but it's definitely a masterpiece of a movie that I think everybody should, should watch. My number 27 pick is Halloween, released in 1978 by John Carp or directed by John Carpenter. Uh, John Carpenter makes a couple appearances on this list. He's one of my favorite horror directors. Halloween maybe didn't create the slasher genre but it made it the thing that it became. It made it as popular as it became. Um, perfect slasher film, in my opinion. Uh, the character of Michael Myers is fantastic. Um, the, the fact that it's just, it's just a low budget movie that uh, does exactly what it's supposed to. You know, it's, it's not the most amazing dialogue ever made. It's not the most amazing performances ever ever had, but Jamie Lee Curtis does do an amazing job in her role. Um, but 
it, it just does everything well, and it really immerses you into the feel of Halloween and the fall. And it's a movie that I have to watch every year in October because it just it, it completely immerses you in that experience. Uh, it does a great job at that. My number 26 pick is Psycho, released in 1960, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. The only Hitchcock movie on my list. Uh, Psycho is very special to me. Um, not only is it the, I believe this is the first slasher movie, that I would argue that Psycho is the first slasher movie, and it's an extremely important movie in terms of uh, the evolution of film. Like, Psycho did a lot of things that were incredibly innovative uh, for, for film as a whole. But Psycho is also really special to me because it's one of the first horror movies I ever watched, and it's the first horror movie I ever bought on Blu-ray. So Psycho is kind of the movie that started my obsession with horror. Um, like I've mentioned before in the channel, I was a very terrified child, <laughs> and I got... Uh, really scared and I would have nightmares um, but just simply by watching things like murder mysteries <laughs> like uh, I was really really timid as a kid and a lot of that has to do with kind of my background and some personal stuff that I dealt with in my childhood but um, that being said I didn't watch horror growing up <laughs> at all and uh, when I finally got to college in my early 20s I started watching horror and it started with Psycho and uh, Psycho's really started my obsession with horror. So, needless to say, it had to be on the list. My number 25 pick is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, released in 2019, directed by Quentin Tarantino. I was never a huge Tarantino fan. Uh, I actually didn't watch any of Tarantino's movies until 2018, I believe it was, and my friends introduced me to Inglorious Bastards. Uh, which I'm going to talk about later because it's also on the list. <laughs> um, but uh, that started my Tarantino uh, obsession. I still haven't seen all of his movies, um, but I've seen most of them. And uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of my favorites. I, I think it's an instant classic. Uh, great performances by Brad Pitt, DiCaprio. Uh, excellent excellent dialogue. I mean, that's what Tarantino's known for, is excellent dialogue. At least one of the things that he's known for. Uh, but my favorite part of this movie is how it captured 1969 Hollywood. Uh, it's an incredible, immersive experience. Uh, just the, the way that the, the movie looks, the way that it feels, and of course you've got the subplot with the Manson family, which is interesting to say the least. Um, so I really, really love this movie. Uh, my number 24 pick is Seven, released in 1990, or 1995, sorry, directed by David Fincher. David Fincher, also one of my favorite directors of all time. Uh, I believe he's going to come up three times today. Um, Seven is such a gritty, uh, dark movie about a serial killer who's uh, killing people that he thinks committed the seven deadly sins. And uh, it's got a great uh, Kevin Spacey performance. Of course, Kevin Spacey, this was before he became infamous for all of his, um, all of his stuff that he did. Um, but uh, he still is a great actor and did some great performances. And I think you can, you can admit that he's not a good person, but still did a great job. Uh, as an actor, but uh, the dialogue is fantastic, the, the story is fantastic, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, fantastic. Uh, I just kind of noticed that Brad Pitt comes up a lot, <laughs> I really like his performances and him as an actor, um, but yeah, great movie, Seven. Number 23 is The Thing, directed or released in 1982, directed by John Carpenter again. Uh, the Thing is my favorite Carpenter movie. And speaking of immersive, uh, this movie is a great movie to watch in the winter time because, of course, it takes place in Antarctica. You've got these scientists who are conducting some experiments in Antarctica, and they come into contact with this 
uh, alien entity and uh, madness ensues. Incredible body horror in this movie. Uh, great creatures. Um, just, it's absolutely disgusting to watch, but it's perfectly disgusting, if that makes sense. Um, excellent, excellent movie. A great Kurt Russell performance. So yeah, The Thing comes in at number 23. My number 22 pick is Joker, released in 2019, directed by Todd Phillips. Joker was my favorite movie of last year. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Joker is my favorite character in the history of film. Um, and comics and uh, Heath Ledger's performance in 2008 of course was uh, my favorite and Joaquin Phoenix uh, <laughs> to me my favorite Joker is there's a 1A and a 1B Joaquin Phoenix is 1B because you just can't you can't do anything better than Heath Ledger did um, but Joaquin Phoenix just embodied that character like a phenomenal acting performance. Um, you really, you really felt that movie. Like the character of Arthur Fleck was, uh, I think, genius to do something like that and do something different from the origin story that we've seen in the comics. Um, to to really focus it on mental health and depression and those kinds of things. It, it made it so much more relatable and uh, it made the movie that much more important to me. So, Joker was fantastic. My number 21 pick, another modern one, Hereditary, released in 2018, directed by Ari Aster. A phenomenal horror movie, my favorite over the past few years. Um, really, really dark and different. A lot of people didn't like this movie because a lot of people, I think, are part of kind of like the, the, I can't think of the word, like the generic horror audience today. Uh, I think horror movies, especially modern ones that have been released in the past several years, have really conditioned audiences, uh, mainstream horror audiences, that's the word I was thinking of. Uh, They've conditioned mainstream horror audiences to enjoy movies that are just a constant barrage of jump scares. And uh, movies like Annabelle come to mind. And uh, The Nun. <laughs> kind of the, the movies that have been re released recently in the Conjuring universe really embody kind of the mainstream horror uh, mindset today. Which is that uh, people love jump scares. And... Uh, I'm not opposed to a good jump scare every now and again, but I love horror movies that go outside of the box. And Hereditary was definitely outside of the box. To me, a movie like Hereditary is so much scarier than a movie like The Nun, even though Hereditary has very few jump scares. It's more about kind of a um, messing with your with your mind, you know? Having this really fucked up stuff happen, but not necessarily focusing on, boo, like what's gonna scare you, you know, uh, that kind of horror, you know, kind of the, the boo jump scare type thing is not really for me. I, I like the stuff like Hereditary. Number 20, Fight Club, released in 1999, directed again by David Fincher. I just watched this movie for the first time during quarantine, actually, and I loved it. Instantly fell in love with it such a unique twist to the film that I'm not going to give away, but if you haven't seen Fight Club, you need to watch it. Incredible message to that movie as well about society and materialism and those kinds of things, but it's got an incredible script. Again, another amazing Brad Pitt performance. Edward Norton is also great in this as well. Uh, great movie in Fight Club. My number 19 film of all time is Inglorious Bastards, released in 2009, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Like I said, this is my first Tarantino movie. Uh, it's Tarantino's movie about Nazis and Nazi Germany. Uh, incredibly graphic, violent scene towards the end of it that was honestly kind of enjoyable uh, to watch, but 
you know, sometimes that kind of stuff is what takes me out of Tarantino's movies. Like, when it just gets so ridiculous and over the top. Uh, but in this case, again, since it was Nazis, it was really enjoyable. Um, anytime a bunch of Nazis gets what get gets what's coming to them <laughs> is enjoyable. But again, an incredible script, great dialogue, great performances. Brad Pitt, again, in this one. Um, great movie. Definitely recommend you check it out. I think it's kind of underrated in uh, Tarantino's uh, catalog or filmography. My number 18 pick is Sleepaway Camp, released in 1983, directed by Robert Hiltzik. Uh, Sleepaway Camp is my favorite slasher movie of all time. Another amazing twist at the end of this film. So most of this film is just some glorious 80s cheese the entire way. A great soundtrack, but really, really cheesy. And then towards the end of this movie, something is revealed, and it makes the movie a million times more fucked up. And I love it. I love it so much. Uh, the leading girl in this uh, is Felissa Rose, who has become a icon in the horror uh, world. Uh, but a great underrated slasher, for sure. Sleepaway Camp. Number 17 is Nightcrawler, released in 2014, directed by Dan Gilroy. Uh, really kind of a modern classic, in my opinion. Great performance by Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, very dark not only in the subject matter, but also in the tone of the movie. Uh, the colors are very dark. It's, um, it's got a really uh, dark tone overall. And of course it deals with um, this guy who's really kind of, a, kind of a loner, kind of a social pariah. And he discovers that a good way to make money might be to film uh, crimes or crime scenes and sell the footage to the nightly news. So it also kind of has a small little message about uh, kind of the the news media in the United States and how over the uh, last 15, 20 years it's really become focused on violence and violent crime and stuff like that. And that's really the main reason why I don't watch the news today because uh, murder rates and violent crime rates are actually going down across the United States. But you would have no idea about that based on the media because the media makes it seem like uh, the world is ending and violence lurks around every corner. So there's actually kind of a really great message with this movie as well. Number 16, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, released in 1980, directed by Irvin Kirshner. Uh, my favorite of the Star Wars movies, my favorite of the original trilogy, I'm sure a lot of people would agree with me with that. Kind of has a more uh, dark subject matter than the first one. Uh, gets more into the backstory of the characters. Uh, of course, Yoda is introduced in this movie, and Yoda is probably my favorite character in all the Star Wars movies. Um, but yeah, just a really fun, enjoyable movie. I didn't watch this movie growing up. I actually didn't watch any Star Wars movies until uh, 2016. And in 2016, my friends showed me uh, Force Awakens. And I really enjoyed that movie. I think we also watched um, uh, the last one in the prequels. I can't remember what it's called. For some reason, uh, my mind has gone blank. But anyway, I really enjoyed both of those. And then I started getting into Star Wars myself. And uh, I've watched the last two in theaters. Uh, and my favorite being Empire Strikes Back. Number 15 is The Wolf of Wall Street, released in 2013, directed by Martin Scorsese. My favorite Scorsese movie? Uh, this movie can be summed up in three words. Hookers, Quaaludes, and Blow. <laughs> this is a really, uh, it's a movie that's really about excess. Not only excess wealth, but like excess in drug consumption, in sex sexual uh, promiscuity, <laughs> um, uh, really interesting movie about Wall Street and kind of the mentality of people who work in Wall Street 
And uh, it's a true story about this guy, Jordan Belfort, who wrote a book that was also called The Wolf of Wall Street. And uh, so there's a lot of true stuff in it. But uh, to me, not only is it just a fun movie to watch, but it's also kind of a great examination of human psychology and kind of the way that some people act, the way they do, and the psychology of greed and stuff like that. Uh, the movie is like three, three and a half hours long, but it really only feels like it's two hours. It flies by. Uh, great, a great accomplishment by Scorsese to make a movie that long that doesn't feel that long. Okay, number uh, 14 we're at now. My number 14 pick is Donnie Darko. Released in 1990... Or no, not 19. <laughs> 2001. Sorry, I lost my place. Released in 2001, directed by Richard Kelly. Donnie Darko. Uh, kind of a special movie to me because I, it was one of the first movies I watched when I uh, uh, moved in with my uh, best friend. And uh, so I, I remember that movie for that reason. But it's also a movie that really makes you think like you have to analyze this movie to even attempt to understand it there's a lot of strange things that happen in this film and uh, it's a movie that really has i don't know if it really has a message to it necessarily but it has a lot of uh, uh i can't think of the word it's got like a lot of depth and stuff and it, it, very difficult to understand and it's told in a very unconventional manner as well so I really enjoy it. It's a movie that makes you think, and I gravitate towards that kind of stuff. So uh, it was a really enjoyable time. Kind of an underrated movie as well. Uh, if you want a movie that's not going to be straightforward and going to be difficult to understand, then Donnie Darko might be for you. My number 13 pick, Casino Royale, released in 2006, directed by Martin Campbell. Uh, this is my favorite Bond movie. I just watched this movie this year, actually. And this movie is a perfect three-act film. Um, it really has three distinct acts that all work on their own, but they also work great together as one movie. So kind of the first act is kind of like an, um, an action uh, film, and then the second act kind of slows down because it focuses on a very important poker game. And then the third act is kind of like a romance gone wrong type thing. Um, and they both work so well apart, but they also work really well together. Uh, one of the best villains of all time in this movie, uh, in Le Chief, a very understandable villain, a very relatable villain. I love when films do that. So yes, Casino Royale, my favorite Bond movie. Number 12 is a film called The Nice Guys, released in 2016 and directed by Shane Black. Uh, this movie is one of the best comedies in the past uh, four or five years, in my opinion. A really great buddy cop vibe. Uh, I've watched this several times and I love it every time. Uh, the dialogue is great, the jokes are great. There's great chemistry between Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling who work together perfectly well in this film. And uh, it's a, just an incredibly entertaining and fun movie to watch. So, and I also think it's pretty underrated because a lot of people don't talk about it. So if you've never seen The Nice Guys, do yourself a favor and check that one out. My number 11 pick is Blade Runner, released in 1982, directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, Blade Runner, another one of those movies that really makes you think kind of similar to Donnie Darko in that uh, that respect. It's uh, difficult to understand at first, but once you get into it, you can like really get into it, and there's lots of things to think about and debate and those kinds of things. A really uh, monumental sci-fi film um, and has a really great ending as well that kind of leaves stuff open to interpretation. My number 10 pick is Inception. Released in 2010, directed by Christopher Nolan. Now, I was really looking forward to seeing this in theaters because they were going to re-release it for the 10th anniversary. Now that Tenet has been postponed, 
I don't know if this is going to be postponed as well, but this is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Another movie that really makes you think, another movie with uh, an ending that is left up to interpretation, a great DiCaprio performance, excellent script, underrated performances from Tom Hardy and Joseph Gordon-Levitt in this movie as well. Uh, just a great movie. Stunning visuals as well as with every Christopher Nolan movie has stunning visuals, but uh, this one especially. My number nine pick. This is a uh, nostalgic favorite for me. This is American Pie, released in 1999, directed by the Whites Brothers. So American Pie, a lot of you are probably familiar with, but this is kind of like a teen sex comedy. And I watched the American Pie films when I was going through puberty <laughs> and really enjoyed them for obvious reasons. Um, but they... Uh, they were just a really fun time. Like, a lot of great jokes, but kind of some jokes that may not fly today in kind of the more PC culture that we're dealing with uh, currently, but uh, really entertaining. And kind of speaking to that point, specifically, I believe they're planning on making a new one in the American Pie series, and I think they're going to do it from a female perspective which could be really, really interesting to see and to see how they do that. And I, I'll watch it for sure, even though it won't be as easy for me to relate to as it was to relate to a bunch of, you know, teenage guys that didn't have a lot of success with girls. Like, hello, that was me in high school. I, uh, I related to that so much and it was just such a fun movie. My number eight pick, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Released in 2011, directed by David Fincher. This is my favorite Fincher movie. One of my favorite movies of all time, as you can tell. Um, another great performance by Daniel Craig. This is the movie that really uh, made me fall in love with Daniel Craig as an actor. Uh, he's a fantastic actor. And another great performance from Rooney Mara as well. Um, this movie is dark. This is so dark. Uh, in tone as well as in subject matter. Uh, it really kind of deals with uh, this mystery. And um, Daniel Craig is a former reporter who's kind of been disgraced. Actually, I, th I think he's still a reporter. I don't think he's been fired. But anyway, he's a reporter that's kind of been disgraced. He's He wrote a story that went really badly. And he was kind of recruited by this rich old guy who lives in the country in Sweden. And uh, this rich old guy wants him to solve a mystery. I believe he had a granddaughter that disappeared several years ago. And Daniel Craig is kind of um, sent there to investigate and figure out what happened. And it's a great movie for kind of isolation because Daniel Craig is um, staying in this cabin that this old guy owns, but it's really out in the country and kind of t uh, cut off from civilization. So you really feel kind of isolated and claustrophobic. And uh, it's a great movie that is really, um, uh, really invests you in the, the time, the place. It's a great movie to watch in the winter time. I love watching it on a snowy night because it really feels, you really feel kind of the desolation uh, and darkness of the movie that way, and you really get uh, captivated in this in this setting. So I love this movie so much. I can't wait to check out the Swedish uh, original film. My number seven pick is Rocky, released in 1976, directed by John G. Avildsen. Uh, this was this one I, I've watched several times growing up because it's one of my dad's favorite movies as well and uh, I kind of love it for that reason but I also love it because it's a great Stallone performance uh, a really relatable character in Rocky Balboa he's kind of like the everyman the underdog that gets a chance at uh, defeating the heavyweight champion of the world it's a great great story uh, fantastic and classic um, a great movie that also is kind of inspiring as well like every time I watch a Rocky movie I want to go to the gym so <laughs> really uh, really great movie 
My number six pick is The Shawshank Redemption. Released in 1994, directed by Frank Darabont. This is a movie that I watched uh, several years ago. This was actually one of the first movies that got me into movies. Like, like I said, I always loved movies, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I really became a huge fan of movies. And this is one of the reasons. An incredible story adapted from a Stephen King novella. Um, great writing, great characters, great performances by Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. Uh, this movie, it does kind of take a lot out of you to watch, because it deals with some pretty heavy subject matter, but uh, if you can get through it, I really, really recommend it. It's such a great movie. I'll take a quick break, and then we'll get to the top five. All right, top five. My number five movie of all time is American Psycho, released in 2000, directed by Mary Heron. Uh, this movie has some of the greatest dialogue I've ever seen in a film. Uh, so funny and entertaining. This movie is really a dark comedy at its core. And it makes so many great jokes that if you have a dark sense of humor like I do, you probably will really enjoy this. Uh, so many quotable lines. Uh, the, the opening sequence where Patrick Bateman, of course played by Christian Bale, uh, who does a phenomenal job as well. Another reason to watch the movie is Christian Bale. But uh, the opening scene where he's getting ready for the day and he's talking about how he takes care of himself and uh, he's talking about like his skincare routine and he's doing all these uh, exercises that just so happen to be these very homoerotic poses. <laughs> like seriously, if you've never seen Christian Bale doing exercises in... Uh, in um, uh, American Psycho, you've got to check it out because it's funny. Um, very homoerotic, in my opinion, but uh, funny as well. Um, but and, and then the, the part about the business cards, which is fantastic. The subtle off-white coloring. It even has a watermark. <laughs> the way he obsesses over the business cards. Uh, it's a really great movie, again, about Wall Street and the 80s. And... Um, it shows the mentality of a sociopath in a perfect way. Like, he literally does not care about anyone but himself, and he really only cares about all of these superficial things. Like, uh, Reese Witherspoon plays uh, his girlfriend in this movie, and there's no connection between them. There's literally nothing. You can tell that they're just together because of... Uh, their social status like there's no other reason why they're together and um it really does a great job of representing kind of the shallowness of that society as well so incredible film american psycho also kind of underrated so i recommend checking that one out my number four film of all time is raiders of the lost ark released in 1981 directed by steven spielberg uh, this is the one and only Spielberg film on the list. And uh, this movie is another one that I've loved since childhood. I remember growing up um, watching this movie several times, uh, renting it from the, uh, I believe it was called Movie Gallery back then, was the rental store that we had uh, in town. I rented it several times from there and watched it. Uh, Marion Ravenwood. The character of Marion was one of my very first crushes. Her and uh, Daisy Duke from Dukes of Hazzard uh, were two of my very first crushes. Another uh, movie that kind of uh, sparked my interest in history as well. Uh, I teach high school history uh, as, as a career, and one of the first times I remember falling in love with history was the, the Indiana Jones uh, movies. Just an amazing story, amazing script. Uh, amazing everything Harrison Ford fantastic um, such a great movie number three is Alien er, released in 1979 directed by Ridley Scott um, I've heard somebody else mention this before but I completely agree with it I feel like there are two kinds of people in this world there are people who love Alien more than Aliens and there are people who love Aliens more than Alien <laughs> so uh 
the first two movies in that series, uh, I'm of the camp that really loves Alien, but I also really love Aliens as well, which was the sequel directed by James Cameron. Uh, it would be in my top 50. I love that movie as well. But that movie is kind of more in the sci-fi action direction. Alien is in the sci-fi horror direction, which I tend to prefer. Uh, incredible claustrophobic movie. A great uh, Sigourney Weaver performance. Of course, has uh, Ripley. The, uh, the aliens, the monsters in this movie, are amazing. They're based on the artwork of H.R. Geiger. And of course, the xenomorphs, the face huggers, uh, really creepy and uh, great visuals and artistry. And uh, the movie looks amazing for having come out in 1979. It really looks beautiful. Great movie. Uh, I actually didn't watch this for the first time until last year. Um, but it quickly shot its way up my list. I love this movie so much. My number two pick is The Matrix, released in 1999, directed by the Wachowskis. Uh, another classic movie. Um, I love The Matrix for a different reason than a lot of people love The Matrix. Uh, although I don't know how uh, the main reason why people love it. Uh, a lot of people love the action, and that's kind of where I was going with this. I don't necessarily love The Matrix because of the action. Now, there is some great action, great visuals, uh, really unique, but I love The Matrix for the philosophy behind it. Uh, it was one of the very first movies that I ever watched that had a major twist like that and made me think a lot about philosophy and the world that we live in and uh, artificial intelligence and stuff like that. Uh, it's a classic sci-fi for me, and mainly because of the the philosophy that the movie uh, is based on, and the philosophy that it made me think about after watching the movie. It's really kind of the first, what I would call, mindfuck movies uh, that I ever watched, and I'll always have a connection with it for that reason. Of course, you've got great action behind it as well. Great performances from Lawrence Fishburne, uh, Keanu Reeves, who for some reason people love to hate on Keanu Reeves. I don't know why. I love the guy. Great actor. Um, so yeah, The Matrix, my number two. And finally, the moment we have all been waiting for, my number one favorite movie of all time. Drum roll, please. It's The Dark Knight, released in 2008 directed by Christopher Nolan. If you've watched my uh, videos before, you probably knew that The Dark Knight was my favorite movie of all time, because I've mentioned that several times in the past, but uh, ever since I watched it for the first time, and I think uh, around 2010, 2011, I watched it a few years after it came out, um, ever since then, I have loved this movie so much. Like I said, Joker is my favorite character in the history of everything. Heath Ledger is my favorite version of the Joker. I love what he brought to the role. He had an amazing performance, amazing look, amazing voice, amazing laugh, um, amazing uh, reasoning behind the character, like why the character did what he did, um, was great as well. And um, Batman, of course, my favorite superhero. Growing up, I remember I watched uh, a ton of Justice League. I watched a ton of the Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond. Uh, Batman has always been my favorite superhero growing up as well. Christian Bale is my favorite live action Batman. Uh, Christopher Nolan, one of my favorite directors. The movie is beautiful, as is all of his movies. Um, Gordon being played by Gary Oldman, fantastic. Uh, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox, Michael Caine as Alfred, I mean, you can go up and down the list of everything I love about this movie. This is a perfect film. Um, Harvey Dent, I forgot to mention Harvey Dent, Two-Face, is in this film. Great uh, storyline for him as well. Um, I love this movie. The Dark Knight is a perfect film. 
Uh, I've never seen it in theaters. That's the one thing that I would love to change. I'm hoping, I've got a movie theater open just about 10 miles from my house, or my apartment, and uh, they've been open for a few weeks. I'm really crossing my fingers that they get the Dark Knight, because they're showing classic movies. Of course, there's no new movies out right now. If they can get the Dark Knight, I'm going to see that in the theater because I've never seen it in the theater. That's one thing that I could cross off my bucket list. Because I love this movie, I've seen it like 30, 40 times. I actually watched it in a class in high school uh, once, um, which was uh, great. Like, <laughs> if you're, um, th that's not the type of movie that you'd usually expect to see, but uh, I believe we watched it in Spanish class. Yeah, and I think we watched it with Spanish subtitles. So <laughs> anyway, a uh, fun, fun story with that movie as well. I love it so much. And that's my top 30 favorite movies of all time. Uh, that's probably the longest video I've ever made on my channel as well. So if you managed to stick through this entire video, congratulations. If you've listened to me ramble for 45 plus minutes, congratulations. <laughs> uh, hopefully you love movies just as much as I do. Uh, movies are a great, uh, great part of life, a great art form, and uh, one of the things that makes life great in my opinion. And it's also a great way to connect with each other like there's so many so many ways that people try to divide us up you know try to tell us that we're different but one of the things that we can really connect with each other on is things like movies and music and art because we all love it um, we all love it to varying degrees not everybody's gonna be as committed as I am <laughs> to my love for movies but I hope you all enjoyed that uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed my list. Uh, go ahead and let me know down below uh, your favorite movies of all time. I'm sure this list is going to change for me over time because your tastes change as you get older and as you uh, change and evolve as a person. So I'm sure this list will change over time. Maybe I may, may, might make another video down the road, but for now this is my top 30 favorite movies of all time. So again, hope you enjoyed. I uh, hope you all have an amazing day and I will check check in with you guys later. Bye.